If people don't like the buildings, it is probably not good for the complete sustainability. I believe that architecture will experience a small revival and will gain significant importance for the care of people, not just accommodation-wise, but also concerning the energy people require. One tries to run the building in such a way that it regulates itself into the target state. Then one realizes that almost half of the total energy consumption flows into infrastructural constructions. The question is, what is comfort? It's an overall trend that these trades grow closer together so that the data is available to the proprietor at all times. There probably are few areas that are as exciting and swing back and forth between design and technology as much as lighting. The sustainability refers to three areas, society, economy and environment. We should act in such a way that the next generation can live in these three areas. In satisfying the needs of the present generation, ours, in such a way that the satisfaction of future generations' needs are not reduced. The most important issue is the well-being of the people who live in these buildings. If people feel good, they will take care of them. All of this is a part of the sustainability of our society. The whole situation of natural lighting, which defines coziness. A very important matter is the outside view, a reference to the surroundings. Then the acoustics of a room, a very important point nowadays. How much noise can I tolerate? 
auch ein ganz wichtiger Punkt, heute, heute ein großes Thema, also wie viel Lärm, wie viel vertrage ich überhaupt. Ich glaube, es würde nicht bedeuten, dass man Komfort alleine nur von der von der I believe that this would not necessarily mean that I look upon comfort only from a technical point of view, but it also has to do with the effect a room has on me and perception of it as such. And we do not only build rooms that are defined purely functional, because for humans there is more to a room. Ja, also Energieeffizienz im Allgemeinen ist ein Thema, das geht auch nicht Energy efficiency is an issue and the lighting planners have noticed that. We are probably affected by the fact that anyone can see the light. Anyone who passes the building can see that the light is on, but for example, not that the air conditioning is running. Wir sind vielleicht auch noch dadurch sehr stark davon betroffen, weil das Licht sieht jeder, jeder da einem Gebäude vorbeikommt sieht, dass das Licht brennt, sieht aber nicht oder weiß nicht, ob jetzt die Klimaanlage läuft oder nicht. Wir müssen uns äh, um Energie zu sparen. Und In order to save energy and to develop intelligent and efficient concepts, we must focus, for example, on the lifespan and burning time of light bulbs. We must also concentrate on operating systems that are available and offer use in these areas and turn on the light where it's needed. Möglichkeiten bieten und dann das Licht einschalten, wenn es benötigt wird. Zuerst einmal stellt sich immer die Frage bei einem Neubauprojekt oder auch bei einem Umbauprojekt. With the construction or redevelopment of buildings, the first question always is whether or not lighting planners are needed. A big problem, and it's probably also the conflict that we always face. It's a good conflict, because it leads to creativity. The conflict that we have to develop with a project on the artistic, the architectural level, and at the same time put it on a solid technical base, so that it actually works. ...entwickeln müssen mit dem Projekt, mit der architektonischen Idee, gleichzeitig aber auch technisch das so untermauern müssen, dass es funktioniert. Wir wissen heute, dass die Lebenszykluskosten bereits nach 15, 20 As we are aware today, the life cycle costs are, after 15 to 20 years, as high as the construction costs. Furthermore, life cycle costs are continuous. And here the principle of provision is applicable. We should build in such a way that the life cycle costs are not too high for the next generation. Otherwise, we will not be able to operate these buildings anymore. Und die Lebenszykluskosten, finde ich, sind im wirtschaftlichen Bereich sehr, sehr zentral. In my opinion, regarding economics, life cycle costs are of utmost importance. If I were to try to reduce the subsequent costs, life cycle costs at this moment, I might have to make a slightly higher investment now, but there will be less maintenance costs in the future. We want to show you that if you build a building which complies with certain sustainability criteria, this will be profitable in the long run. Dann ist das schlussendlich auch rentabel. Grundsätzlich bin ich der Meinung, dass, dass die, die Gebäude... Generally, I'm of the opinion that the shell of a building has the same function as human skin. In my opinion, differentiating between the facade and the building is irrelevant. It should constitute one unit. Und Gebäude, dass die nicht zulässig ist, dass das eine Einheit bilden muss dann muss die Fassade natürlich auch schützen vor Überwärmung im Sommer. The facade must also, of course, protect from too much heat in the summer. It has therefore various functions. Die statische Fassade ist da in dem Sinn... The static facade has gone in favor of a dynamical facade. People in the space industry are now talking about using textiles in the living quarters. When you look at what these textiles can do, what they achieve, that one even thinks about using these materials for facades. A crazy idea. In the end, we might be living in tents. Facade, zum Beispiel, mit mir aus diesem Material zu machen. Es ist verrückte Situation, dass wir vielleicht dann im Schluss eher in einem Zelt wohnen. Na, Sie sehen ja, dass die ganze Halle dieses Bahnhofes mit Glasscheiben gedeckt ist. As you can see, 
The complete hall of this train station is covered by glass. The solar cells, a multitude of which are in a solar module, have a repetitive character, similar to tiles, and these are very usable patterns in architecture. At this moment in time, we are experiencing how important energy policy issues have become on the political agenda. We can, therefore, say that architecture has become political. And I find this to be extremely exciting. A building which does not only use too much fossil energy, therefore also contributes towards a country's independence, consisting of a civilization which does not depend on a pipeline, but can provide for itself. In order to conserve energy, we must know where the energy is being used and to which amount, and that's where networks come in. So we can offer information to those responsible for energy, so it's apparent to them how high the usage is. With each optimization measure, one should really check whether it has a desired outcome. Networks can be useful in supervising this. The flow of energy can be controlled efficiently and accurately. With a dripping tap you call a plumber to fix it so as not to waste water. There's nothing comparable in electricity. It's because the appliances aren't intelligent enough and aren't interconnected. For me it's obvious that the system must not control the people, it's simply there, silently in the background. It doesn't concern me. Either we use speech recognition, so one can simply go in and say, I want my room to heat up or cool down, or I want more light. It would be best if the sustainability was also sustainability of energy. A building should not gobble up energy endlessly. A building should have a slow energy flow as a result of energy efficiency and, on the other hand, also partly provide energy from its shell.